Hello, this is Chris Hammond with .NET New Corporation. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about what's new within .NET New 7. So the first thing you'll find that's new in DNN 7 is the new installation process. We have the installation process here on the screen. You can see it's a one-page installation where you fill in your username, the name of your website, you can choose a template, then you need to configure your database information. When you click continue, that installation process will execute all of the necessary scripts to create your .NET Nuke website. This process is a lot more simplified than it was in previous versions of .NET Nuke. After you complete the installation process for DNN, you'll find a new Getting Started page. On that Getting Started page, you'll find this video, What's New in DNN 7, as well as the Getting Started video you'll find right in the middle of the screen. On the right side of the page, you'll find a link to configure the advanced settings within DNN, as well as links to .NET Nuke.com to find answers to questions and to submit ideas on product feedback. Within the Getting Started page, you can click on the arrow to the right to see another screen with some more information on how to go through and change the design of your site utilizing skins from the store, as well as add new functionality utilizing modules from the store. To the right of that, you'll find some sponsors of the .NET Nuke project. Once you're through with the Getting Started page, you can click on the X in the top right-hand corner, and now you'll notice that your .NET Nuke site looks completely different than if you've ever installed .NET Nuke 6. With DNN 7, we have a completely new skin and template that is utilized when you create your website for the first time. The template creates a fictional business called Awesome Cycles, which has a variety of content here on the home page, and a few additional pages as well that you can find within that main navigation. Now for editing your website, you'll find that .NET Nuke 7 provides a completely different control panel for the platform. Up at the top of the screen, we have our admin menu and our host menu, but these have been reorganized. We now have a tabbed interface here with the first tab showing us common settings, the second tab showing us advanced settings, and then the third tab allowing us to create bookmarks of our own settings. So if there are frequently used settings from the previous two tabs, you can go to one of those settings and click on the bookmark to add that to your bookmark tab. We can do that with a few of the different options to create our own bookmarks. You'll find that feature under the admin and the host menus. Now the bookmarks there are for either of the two levels, either admin or host. Also within the control panel, you'll find a tools menu and your help menu, which will allow you to get to the online help for .NET Nuke as well as back to the getting started page. And then within the control panel, we can add modules to the page by mousing over modules and clicking on Add New Module. Now this will actually bring up a list of all of the modules on our website, which we can then scroll through. And utilizing drag and drop, we can now click on one of those modules and bring it further down into the page. When we release it, that will then add the module to the page. As the page refreshes, we can see we now have a new text HTML module there underneath the rotating banner. Under the Pages menu within the control panel, we have the ability to add, copy, and import pages. And then we also have some shortcuts under Users for creating users and managing users and roles. Now another change in the control panel is in the top right corner. We now have this Edit Page option which allows us to go into edit mode. Now by default, you are going to be in view mode within .NET Nuke. And when you're in view mode, you don't have the ability to make changes to the page. When you mouse over that edit mode in the top right corner and click on edit this page, we then switch into edit mode within .NET Nuke. Now you need to be in edit mode in order to access the content within the modules. And when we switch into edit mode, we'll now see on the page, wherever we have a module with content, we have three new icons for action menus. Those action menus are for editing, for managing the settings, and then for changing or moving positioning of modules on a page. So as we mouse over those action menus, we have options available to us. Also found within the edit page option is the ability to change the settings for the page, change the appearance, and change the permissions. Now if we go ahead and go into one of the HTML modules on the page, and we choose the Edit Content option, we'll take a look at some of the new features within the .NET New Professional Edition that are now available to us. Within the HTML module, you'll find that we have our Rich Text Editor. Now the functionality in the Rich Text Editor has not changed from version 6 to version 7, though the look and feel of that text editor has changed a bit. If we come into the text editor and we start typing, 
what you'll see up above when you're using the professional edition of .NET Nuke is that content, those changes you are making, are automatically saved. Now they're saved into a temporary location, they're not published, but that temporary location and that temporary saving allows you to recover content if for some reason you close the window or you lose your browser crashes. DNN is, is automatically saving some of those changes so you can go into that content and recover it if necessary. If we go ahead and scroll down and click on save, we can save that content. That will save and publish that content within that text HTML module. Now let's take a look at another one of the features within, within the HTML module for the professional edition. If we come in here and we make some additional changes and we save that change, the professional edition of .NET Nuke as well as the enterprise edition now allow us to do version comparison. So if we come back into the module, we can take a look at the version tracking tab and from there we can select two versions to compare. And if we click on the compare option, .NET Nuke will now highlight the changes between versions of content. You can see where content has been inserted, modified, or deleted. You can also do an HTML comparison of that content. From here, we can go back to the version history. We can choose if we want to roll back or if we want to preview some of those various versions of content. Now, in addition to the HTML module changes for the professional edition, you'll also find within the professional edition that we now offer cross-site module sharing. So, in a similar manner to the way you can allow site groups within .NET Nuke Professional Edition and Enterprise Editions, which allow you to share users across websites, you can also start to share modules and content across websites within the Professional and Enterprise Editions. Now the Enterprise Edition actually has some additional features of its own within DNN 7. We now have Active Directory support built into the Enterprise product. We also have some SharePoint list support built into the product as well. Be sure to check out the product pages on .netnuke.com for more information about all of those features. If you're a designer within .NET Nuke, you'll be pleased to know that we have now upgraded and modified our default.css file to clean out a lot of the bloat that has grown into that CSS file over the past eight or nine years. So that updated CSS file is found and loaded on every portal within .NET Nuke. You can access that within the portals underscore default folder if you want to see those changes. Another change related to designers within DNN 7 Within the default template, there's now a style guide page. You can find that under the About Us page within the menu. And what you'll find on the style guide page is an overview of the classes and styles and how they apply within .NET Nuke. So you can utilize the content that's being delivered on this page to customize and adjust your skins as you create new skins and designs for DNN. For software developers, .NET Nuke has made some changes within the service layer that was introduced in .NET Nuke 6.2. We now support the Web API method for doing, developing services and deploying services to your website. So you can easily start to implement web services that can interact with your own modules as well as interact within .NET Nuke's API to be able to deliver information outside of your website perhaps to mobile devices or even desktop applications. Some additional changes for developers include a new data access layer called DAO2 within .NET Nuke 7, which makes it even easier to access information as a module developer within the database of DNN. And finally, we also have a developer skin. It's a lightweight, high-performance skin developers can utilize to speed up their development processes and their development websites. Hope you've enjoyed some of the new features that we've been able to demonstrate in the DNN7 What's New video. Again, this is Chris Hammond with .NET New Corporation. Thanks for watching.